All right, so this is my buying guide for the MacBook lineup that Apple has for, I guess, mid 2020. And I think now is a good time to make this video because Apple's pretty much refreshed all their MacBooks as of now, not the 16 inch, but they pretty much gutted all their butterfly switches and now have the Magic Keyboard, upgraded the base storage, as well as now they all have quad cores. With the MacBook Air, it's optional. This is really just going to be a brief overview of which one you should get. I do have in-depth reviews and comparisons on my channel, so if you want a little bit more in-depth, go check out my other videos for that. But if you do like the video, please make sure to subscribe so I can make more content like this, and let's get into it. So starting off with the MacBook Air, for one, this is the only MacBook that comes in gold, so if you absolutely want gold, you gotta get the MacBook Air. It comes with two Thunderbolt 3 ports as well as a headphone jack. I think this is the laptop that most people should be buying if they're not doing professional level work. So like, for example, if you're like a high school student or you're a person doing your undergrad and you're just taking a lot of notes, writing papers, just browsing the web, just doing basic computer functions, I would say that this is the laptop you should be looking at. And I think people should get the i5 edition as well because you're getting that quad core processor and I think for the value of your money moving up to the i5, you're getting much more performance in that department. But the biggest thing that's holding back this MacBook Air is just the thermal design. So in my testing, if you do any type of video conferencing, this thing will sound like a jet engine and everyone in your meeting is gonna hate you whenever you unmute your mic and start talking. So I don't recommend this MacBook Air if you do any type of video conferencing. So that's stuff like Zoom, Skype, Microsoft Teams, WebEx, things like that. Avoid the Air. But if you're doing like very basic video editing or photo editing, you can get away with it on the MacBook Air. So my recommended build for the Air is to just get the i5 and nothing else. And the reason why I say nothing else is because the i7 I don't think is a good value for your money as well as if you do decide to get 16 gigabytes of RAM with the i5, you're sitting at $1,300. And guess what's $1,300 on this table? The MacBook Pro. So with this $1,300 model, you're getting two Thunderbolt 3 ports, a headphone jack, so it's exactly the same as the MacBook Air, but you're getting a better display, better speaker, better processor, better cooling, just overall a better value for your money if you do decide to get 16 gigabytes of RAM in the MacBook Air, which I don't recommend. So this is the MacBook Pro that I actually recommend on this channel for most people. I don't think this $1,800 model is a good value for most people's money unless you can take advantage of that better graphics that comes with the 10th generation processors so with this macbook pro 13 inch oh you also get a touch bar as well this macbook pro 13 inch i think is a very good laptop especially with the magic keyboard it's i think an improvement over the 2019 model as well like i said you're getting better speakers and i think for people who are doing video editing photo editing if you are doing a lot of development work an audio file making beats. I think that this MacBook Pro is a very capable machine and you don't need to just option to get the $1,800 model just because it's more expensive. In terms of performance, it's pretty much identical, but I think the performance different doesn't really justify that $500 price difference right off the bat. But if you do decide to option this up, my recommended build is to get 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. So then at that price point, you're only setting that $200 difference between the higher end MacBook Pro 13 inch. And if you think you can justify going up an extra $200 to get that extra performance, then go ahead and get this $1,800 MacBook Pro. It's a very good computer. It's also compared to speaking to the older $1,300 one. You're getting better speakers, better microphone. I would say that the camera looks a little bit better even though I think they are the same. You're getting a better processor, two fans as well. So this one overall is a better computer than this $1,300 model because it's using newer hardware. But like I said before, in terms of performance, I don't think a lot of people are going to be taking advantage of that yet. So my recommended build is just the base model, but if you need that extra RAM, you can double it and go to 32 gigabytes. If you need more storage, you can go ahead and get a terabyte. Um, but I would say that if you are up optioning up this laptop, you could probably get away with going to the 16 inch model because I think in terms of your money and value, you're getting just way more value for your money if you go for that 16 inch. You're getting a better display, better speaker, better pretty much everything on that 16 inch model. But the only hit you're taking with going with that 16 inch is the form factor. It's not as portable as these laptops here. So I, I know a lot of people like the 13 inch, 14 inch that may come out, but 
This 13 inch, in terms of portability, comparatively speaking to the 16 inch, is just much better for majority of people. So another thing I wanna mention is the refurbished store as well. So if you are a person who wants to go into the butterfly switch territory, the refurbished store is there. It is really good value for your money. You're also getting one year warranty of Apple Care, and you can get Apple Care Plus on those devices. So if you are a person who worries about if your laptop breaking since you're buying used or refurbished, you're pretty much covered by Apple for a year right off the bat. Now, another thing I wanna know as well is the iPad Pro. And what people don't know about the iPad Pro is it's a very good device. Like with this new Magic Keyboard, it is expensive. My goodness, it's really expensive actually. This iPad Pro, I've been using it for a month and a half. I've been using it to edit my videos. It's pretty much my go-to because I, honestly, I was pretty skeptical using this device because I didn't think I can get away with using it as my laptop, but I have gotten away with using this as my laptop. But unless my app isn't on macOS, or you know, if I'm doing like real development work, then I would use the MacBook Pro. But for everything else, I would get the iPad. It's a very good device. Like if you're writing papers, taking notes, like things that you would do on the MacBook Air, the value for your money is much better with the iPad. Like your video conferencing problems are gone with the iPad. And in terms of performance, if we're talking about benchmark scores, this iPad Pro mops the floor with everything that's on this table. And the biggest thing is, it's just the accessories that you have to get with the iPad Pro. So this Magic Keyboard, this is the 11 inch, I think it was like $300, like my goodness, Apple. It is a really good device. Like it really does complement this iPad Pro. And with the new Magic Keyboard that it comes with, it really does feel like you're typing on a traditional laptop. And with the trackpad as well, you're getting pretty much all the gestures that you would get on macOS. But I would say, do a little bit of research, like just a little bit of research on the iPad Pro and make sure you can get away with it. Like if there are apps that are on macOS that aren't on iPadOS and you can't do it within the browser, then the iPad Pro can't be an option for you. But if you are like a student or if you're a person writing papers, even like doing media consumption on this thing is much better in my opinion than using a MacBook Air or even the Pro sometimes, then I would say look into the iPad Pro. It really is a very good machine. So that's my little tidbit on the iPad Pro. And yeah, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Where am I? On some interstate. But if you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure to subscribe. Like I said, this is going to be the last MacBook video I'm making for a while. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. Leave a like if you did like it. And as always, much love. And I'm gonna walk this way. Thank you.